Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Snublin coming to you from With One Accord Church Ministries with another in our series of Tales from the Crypt, quote unquote, <laughs> about uh, things from my somewhat dark past. Uh, this one has kind of got one foot in the dark past and one foot in the hopeful uh, present time of my being a born again believer. So we're talking about the Mormons again, and because there's so much there. And uh, I would just say this up front, we do have an earlier Tales from the Crypt video that deal with a lot of the weirdness that's involved in the Mormons. And, you know, and again, generally the Mormon people are wonderful people. And there's no denying that. But the problem is they're lost. They're following a false Christ, a false gospel, a fake separate scripture they call the Book of Mormon and so on. Um, their salvation is not based on the cross and they're trusting in false prophets like Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and so on. Beyond that, there, even when I was in the Mormon church, and I, we talk about this in the earlier video, so I'm not going to get into it again in great depth, except to say that you know, we were out there, we went through the Salt Lake Temple for our endowments. We got to meet with an apostle of the Mormon church. And um, there were security guards underneath the Salt Lake Temple that looked like humanoid lizards. And the guy, the apostle, he met with Elder Faust, as much as told us in so many words that Lucifer was the god of the Mormon temple. And then there's also, in the, in the earlier video, we discussed how a lot of women in the uh, LDS church are abused either physically or even sexually, even to the point, tragically, of, of genital, uh, genital mutilation. Not that that is common within the church, but it's there, and it's a reality, and it's all tied into the quote-unquote patriarchal order. Uh, that they, they believe in. So there's a lot of darkness there. And, and it's unfortunate because most Mormons, as I said, are really good people. And but, but still, this is the problem. So when I got saved in the midst of all of this, I, I was eventually asked about two years after my salvation by Ed Decker, who at that time was probably the world's most notorious anti-Mormon guy, uh, to come out and give a talk in Salt Lake. Um, and I called the talk Joseph Smith and the Temple of Doom. And in that talk, I chronicled, and by the way, we do have an updated, we have both the original talk, which was in 1986, on available on a, um, I mean, it's obviously from a uh, video cassette originally, but uh, it was my very first talk. And you can see me back when I was, you know, in my 30s. Um, but anyway, we have an updated version of that from 2011, which has a lot more graphics and a lot more detail in it. So if you're interested in that kind of material, we can I would suggest you get those. But in any event, um, I gave this talk, and it was sensationally um, successful. I mean, the place was packed. And it caused a huge amount of controversy because if both Ed Decker and I, more of a latecomer to this, we were putting forth the thing that Mormons weren't just, what was going on in the Mormon temple was not just heretical, but it was actually diabolical. It was demonic in nature. It was, it was fiendish and hellish and rooted in both the occult and Freemasonry. So, because of that, we got a lot of a lot of flack, and that's not what I want to talk about today. But for decades, even before all this happened, there have been reports of weird things going on underneath the Salt Lake Temple, because the Salt Lake Temple has layer after layer, sub-basement after sub-basement underneath it. Uh, and Christians, and I want to just say this, understand that literally thousands and thousands of people have gotten saved out of the Mormon church because of the work of people like Ed Decker and Jim Spencer and myself and others who labored tirelessly throughout the 
the 80s and the 90s and you know I mean it is now retired but his son is, is still you know carrying on the work but you know many many Mormons have gotten saved and come to a, the saving understanding of Yeshua and the cross of Calvary and and you don't need all of this weird stuff to in order to get into the celestial kingdom quote unquote so anyhow in the midst of all of this, uh, one lady that got saved had, had been working. She happened to be a native. I forget if she was Swedish or Norwegian or Danish, but one of those Scandinavian countries who had become a Mormon and then got, you know, they tapped her to translate the temple endowment, which is this elaborate, lengthy ritual that's done in the temple. And it's highly secret, even though now, thankfully, it's out there. Um, partly because of the courage of some former Mormon temple workers and partly, of course, because of the Internet, because, you know, there's, it's there. If you want to watch the secret temple endowment, you can probably find it on the Internet. In any event, the uh, this lady, what, you couldn't take the text of the temple endowment out of the temple because of security, so she had to kind of virtually live in the temple while she did this work. And she said that there are layer upon layer underneath, you know, sub-basement after sub-basement, and some of the stuff, she didn't even know what it was. Powerful, powerful, kind of creepy things going on down there. Um, numerous women over the years, right up to the 80s and 90s, reported being involved in sexual orgiastic type rituals underneath the temple with temple leaders involved. This is not, this is not, you know, something that's rare. This is something that many women have reported that were, of course, they're all, you know, um, prostitutes, sex workers, whatever you want to call them. So you can say, oh, well, they're, they're not, you know, they're not a good witness. And you could say that, I suppose. But, you know, you get enough of this stuff going on, you start really wondering, what's going on under the temple? You know, we know there's stuff in the top three floors of the temple that are above ground that are kind of weird and Masonic and and very anti-Christian. Um, but it gets deeper as you go deeper. So in any event, um, many missing children. You know, like I know as we're filming this this, this film um, about child uh, child trafficking, you know, that has just been released with Jim Caviezel, and I, I'm very, very glad to see that come out because it's a huge, tragic issue. But, but what they probably aren't talking about in that film, this isn't just about, you know, Colombia and Honduras and Mexico. Uh, I mean, there's, the last I heard, up to 17,000 missing children in Utah that, are, that have been somehow sucked into the underground realm of the Mormon church. Maybe more by now. And uh, I, I think in the earlier video, I talked about how uh, the presiding bishop of the church uh, at the time, back in the 90s, uh, Glenn Pace was his name, issued a report on how there was a huge amount of ritual satanic abuse going on in the Wasatch Valley, which is where the Salt Lake City and the Salt Lake Temple are. So in any event, there's a lot of strange things swirling around that temple. That's why I called it the Temple of Doom. And in any event, I want to talk about this one uh, testimony of this young man who, um, who had gotten into some minor trouble with the law. He was like 15, somewhere in there. And, he, and this was in the late 80s. And he, he uh, got involved with a job program that was in out out west of Salt Lake in a city called Tuele, if I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, anyhow, he, he happened to come in contact with a, with a pastor friend of ours, Ed and me, and he told this story. He said that essentially on the night of the full moon, he and several other young, young boys, I mean teenagers, were bundled into this van and driven into town, into Salt Lake, and they parked outside Temple Square. Now, understand, Temple Square is surrounded by this very formidable wall. 
Uh, you probably couldn't even drive a truck through it if you tried, maybe a tank, but it's very well secured. It, I mean, I, I had, when I was a Mormon, I had friends that were former Secret Service agents because a lot of people in the FBI and the um, CIA and the Secret Service are Mormons, which may or may not give you comfort. Um, but in any event, he said that the security around the Salt Lake Temple Square is better than the security at the White House. Um, anyway, take it as you will. And so, but here's what's interesting. This, this van full of kids drove up and parked. They were led to get out of the van. And according to this young man's testimony, they were able to climb over the wall, which supposedly had like, you know, security things and laser lights and all kinds of things to, that would set off alarms. There were no alarms. And so they got into the Temple Square, which is about a city block in size, and they were taken to this area that was between the visitor center and the tabernacle, the Mormon tabernacle, which is where they have those conferences and concerts and things. And it was this big grate. They opened up the grate that went down below, and they walked through this thing. And again, according to this young man, they were taken along this long winding down the hill tunnel. And finally, they got to this door, and the, this cryptic knock was given on the door, and they opened up, and there was this huge orgy going on. And they were brought in, and they, these young boys were basically being sexually used. Uh, you know, whether you can call it, I mean, obviously it was, it was um, child abuse legally in the sense that they were all underage. And it was, it was a satanic orgy. He said there were skulls on the wall, and at the highest level, you know, like the prophet and counselors of the church, we're sitting there in throne watching all of this sexual stuff going on. And, you know, basically it was like something out of a, out of a horror movie. Anyway, so he told this story to this pastor and the, the guy thought, well, this is bizarre. This couldn't possibly be. Because, you know, it, it sounds like, again, something that someone, kid would make up. So he I'm going to just test this out. So what he did is the following month on the full moon, he went and, and, it was, there was a certain time that this van was supposed to go and park there. And he went and he parked there before the van would have gotten there. And he said it was interesting because at this time there was a Howard Johnson's restaurant across the street from the temple. And there was a man in a car watching. And he kept glowering at the pastor. Like, you know, kind of giving him the evil eye, like, why don't you leave? Why don't you leave? And finally he drove off. And so the pastor thought, well, just for the heck of it, I'm going to see if I can't get over this wall. So he happened to have a basketball in his car, and he took the basketball and accidentally threw the basketball over the wall so he'd have an excuse, you know. And so he was able to climb. Well, this, this pastor happened to be, you know, kind of tall and skinny and athletic. And he climbed over the wall. No alarms went off which he found remarkable because he, he was a pastor in the area. He knew how well fortified the Salt Lake Temple was. So somebody had turned off the security on, it would have been the west wall of the temple. And so he went over and there was the grate, just like the kid had said, in, in the middle of the pavement between these two big buildings. And so he thought, well, what the heck, I'm going to open up, you know, he, he had more courage than most people would. And he went down there, and he actually got to the door that this kid had talked about, but he didn't feel like he wanted to go in, and I don't blame him one bit. So anyway, he told this to Ed Decker and Jim Spencer and I, and, you know, it happened that we had uh, Ed's friend, Pat Matriciana, who at that time was was shooting films like The God Makers, and we were doing The God Makers 2, which was a sequel. And he said, let's see if we can get footage about this. So we, now this is about, this is about the power of prayer, okay? We, re, we had a really powerful prayer meeting, and we prayed that he would be able, Pat, to get onto temple grounds without being hauled off by church security. 
And we figured the only way to do that was because at this time, like I said earlier, Ed Decker was kind of considered to be the Antichrist by the Mormon Church. I mean, he was the most reviled, hated figure in all of America, maybe even in the world in terms of Mormons. And so what we were going to do after prayer, we decided, okay, Ed and I are going to walk in the Temple Square because it, it's more or less a public place. It's for tourists and things. People walk around during the day. And we knew that as soon as Ed walked in the Temple Square, they'd go on red alert. And they did. So we thought maybe we could attract all the attention to Ed. At this time, I was relatively unknown, but he was like, you know, amazingly feared by the Mormons. And so we did. We walked on a Temple Square, and immediately there were all these church security guys that looked like, you know, they all had black suits and buttons in their ears. Just like that, they were walking with us, cordoning us off, like in case we were going to do something bizarre, you know, like throw a bomb at the temple or something. So we were just walking around, you know, and, and meanwhile, Pat Matriciano was over there filming all of this stuff. And he got all the footage he needed because we had prayed. Hallelujah. And when he finally got the footage, then suddenly the head of church security noticed him with a, you know, big camera, you know, a professional video camera, not like, you know, some little tourist camera. And they hauled us into the, uh, the tabernacle. And, um, I don't want to get into all the details because this is getting longer than I thought it would. But basically they gave us the left foot of fellowship. They told us that we were not welcome there. He, that they knew that Pat was an enemy of the church. They knew that Ed Decker was an arch enemy of the church. And so they basically threw us out. But we got the footage, and that footage of the, of the great and of the environment around there and of all the satanic, because the, the Mormon temple is full of satanic symbols on the outside, Masonic stuff, witchcraft stuff, and I go into all of this in my video uh, the 2011 video, especially uh, Mormonism's Temple of Doom. So um, I'm not going to go into detail on that. But the point here is that that there's stuff going on underneath the surface. And in a way, it's, it's like the Mormon church is like a metaphor for much of our society. Because until very recently, people were kind of assuming that everything was okay with America. And now we know it isn't. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of bad stuff exposed. And because I'll tell you, we prayed. Ed and I and many other ministers got together at a conference in Washington, D.C. in 1980. And we prayed, according to Ephesians 5.11, that the unfruitful works of darkness would be exposed. And they were, and they are, and it's getting more and more the case. And I would submit to you that this new film, Cry of Freedom, or I forget if that's the title or not, but I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. It's just the latest manifestation of the Almighty bringing forth the works of darkness so they can be brought to light and exposed to, to the scrutiny, both legal and spiritual, of the communities in which this evil exists. And I just want to close with a couple of thoughts here. Number one, because of all of this, what, what I just narrated in the last few minutes, number one, that young man got gloriously saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of his friends got saved. Hallelujah. And of course, thousands of people have come out of the Mormon church because of the work uh, uh, that Ed Decker and Jim Spencer and I and others put in to putting out these videos and these books, you know, like my book, Mormonism's Temple of Doom, which right now we're working on getting back in print. Pray that we have the time and the resources to do that. But we do have the, the video, the DVD, which is awesome. And many Mormons are getting saved. And we are praying for revival. We are praying that that the more the darkness is exposed, that people would understand 
that there, that, you know, you, you can't have light without shadow. You can't have shadow without light. And I believe Yeshua is coming very soon. And I believe he wants to come and find a church that was without spot and wrinkle. And we need, as as the, the good guys, quote unquote, you know, the, the born again believers, we need to gird up our loins and be ready to fight against the darkness because our prayers are powerful. And we can we can blind the enemy like we did years ago in the Salt Lake Square. I mean, we can we can get people saved and get people set free, but we need to pray. And in the midst of all of this darkness, realize that as dark as I was, I mean, I was, man, I mean, I was a Satanist. You know, I was a Freemason. I was a witch. One lady prayed for me, and that was enough to knock down a huge pile of strongholds around me to the point that I got finally got born again after five years in the Mormon church. It kind of served as a spiritual decompression chamber because at least it was pretending to be Christian. And then I, then I finally got out of the Mormon church after I got born again, and hallelujah, here we are. I've been in ministry now since 1986. The Almighty can work wonders. Yeshua can save anybody. And even if you're a victim of some of this kind of stuff, child abuse, satanic abuse, horrible things. that have been, Unfortunately, these things have been going on for many, many years. They're not just something new. It's just that with the advent of modern technology and the Internet and all of that, it's become a, a huge thing. But... Um, we need to pray that the darkness would be exposed, and we need to pray that these precious children would be set free, and they would be ministered to, and that they would be able to be saved. And we need to pray that the Mormon people would be saved, because as I have said, except probably for the leadership, the vast majority of Mormons are wonderful people, but they're deceived, and they're following a false gospel. I was one of them, and I was trying my best to be a good guy, you know, but I couldn't succeed at it totally because I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit that the Mormons talk about ain't the Holy Spirit. Because you cannot have the Holy Spirit unless you are a born-again, genuine Christian, and they are not, unfortunately. And I know they would protest against that, but, you know, we have many documented things available on our website about why that's the case, why, why the Mormon church is false, and that they need to genuinely get born again. So anyway, um, I want to leave you with hope that even in the midst of all of this, we're seeing the darkness exposed. The more you pray, the more you intercede, the more the darkness will be exposed, the more innocent people will be set free from this stuff, whether it's the the horrors of child trafficking or whether it's the spiritual bondage of the Mormons or the Jehovah Witnesses or the Freemasons, whatever it might be. The more you pray, you will fortify yourself, you will fortify your family. So don't forget to pray. You know, our ministry has put a great emphasis over the years on prayer because it's the foundation of everything else. And I don't want to make this too long, so I just want to encourage you, if you have Mormon friends, neighbors, colleagues, whatever, get some of our materials. And we, we have um, a, a straight talk on our website you can download for free on how to minister to Mormons, how to witness to Mormons. It's very, very, it's been very, very effective over the decades. I wrote it right back and way back in the late nine in the early nineties and we've sent out thousands of copies of it. Now you can just download it uh for free on our website with oneaccord.org. So uh, I'm gonna pray now. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, I just lift up everybody that's watching this. I pray that they would be encouraged to pray more and to do spiritual combat against the forces of darkness, which are indeed roiling around us. But we know 
you have said, you know, be of good cheer, for I, Yeshua, have overcome the world. And we, we glorify your name for that because we know it's true. We know that you are, you are Lord over this world. And we know that, as it says in the scriptures, that even though you're here and you're dining in the midst of your enemies with us, enjoying fellowship with you in prayer and in worship. Father, I pray that everybody would continue to pray and intercede before the throne for revival and for America to repent. I pray that Mormon people would get saved more and more, more and more by the dozens and dozens of people and they would become born again Christians, Father. I pray, Father, that you would expose the darkness that's, that's out there in the world. And I pray also that you would save these precious children that for whatever purpose are being trafficked uh, and, and you know, are being stolen from their parents and all of these other horrible things. We want to pray for them too, Father. Father, we also pray that everybody that's watching this film would, would be blessed and equipped and empowered. We pray, Father, that they would know that you are the sovereign of the universe. We pray that they would know that you are with them in their lives and in their struggles, because we know we all have struggles, Father. Strengthen us, sustain us, anoint us, clothe us with your supernatural power, fill us with your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit. We pray for all of these things in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Omein. Vimru, Omein. Well, thank you for watching this. We um, would again ask you to please subscribe and share. If you've not already done so, please share this video. And also, we have, uh, of course, our financial needs, which seem to always get greater in the summer. Um, so we would ask you to please pray about supporting our work. We're putting up a, a card where you can see there's various pathways you can go to um, to donate, whether it's with um, PayPal or by check or text to give or Zelle, you know, we really need your help. We really need your prayers. And we thank you so much that you have helped us to really grow this channel because, again, YouTube is kind of doing some strange things and we're trying to figure out a way. We're, we're going to be putting a lot of our videos on Rumble too in case something happens. So. Be blessed in all that you do. We pray that Yeshua would bless you richly. And I say shalom, shalom.